Hey guys, how are you going and welcome to your second video tutorial on moment.js. So in this one, I'm going to be covering parsing. And basically in the context of moment.js, parsing is the act of taking some sort of date time information and then converting that into a moment object. And the reason why you want to do this is because basically all of moment's features are based on one of these moment objects, which means in order to actually use this library, you will need one or more moment objects. So in this video, I'm going to be covering some of the more popular ways to parse using moment.js. So let's go inside the text editor and take a look at one of the more basic ways to create a moment object. So this is going to be creating a moment object for the current date and time. So we can say here, um, the current date plus time, this is done by what well, we can simply just real quickly here, assign a new variable uh, called M equal to, and we can say moment just like that. So calling the moment function without passing in any arguments is going to give us a moment object for the current date and time. So I, I can just simply console.log here M I can save this and refresh the browser and we have this right here. We get the moment object in the console and if I was to expand the prototype, we can see here we get all of the methods or at least most of the moment methods right here. So this is like a beefed up date object. So that's that. So um, the thing is right when you create these moment objects they are by default in local mode which means when you're displaying um, or formatting your date or times from one of these moment objects by default they're going to display in your own local time zone so i can demonstrate this let's go back inside the editor and i can say down here console.log i'm going to log out the value of the two string method called on the moment object. So we can say here m dot two string, and this is going to give us um, the date time of this m moment object in my local time zone. I can then do uh, what's called a two iso string. So this is going to be the two iso string method on the moment object, and this one is going to give us. Um, the M moment uh, date time string in an ISO 8601 format and also it's going to be in UTC. So I can save this and refresh the browser and we get here Monday May 20 2019 at 9.06 p.m. GMT plus 10. We can see my 10 hour UTC or GMT offset is being displayed here. So this conveys that this object is in local mode. This one, um, this method always returns you the UTC um, uh, value and also in the ISO 8601 format we can see here we get 11, so the 11th hour which is obviously 10 hours behind uh, my local offset. We also get the Z to once again confirm this is in fact in UTC. So. I'm going to be, as I keep showing you different ways to parse, we're going to see how these um, how these two methods change as we move forward. So let's go back inside the editor and take a look at the second way to create a moment object. So let's go down here. This will be through a, um, an ISO 8601 formatted date or daytime string. So we can say here, create from ISO 8601 string. So for example, I can say M is equal to moment and then pass in um, an ISO 8601 string. So for example, 2019-05-19. And basically, uh, for those of you who don't know, an ISO 8601 string is basically just a standard for displaying dates and times. And most languages are going to have some sort of way either natively or through an extension to output your dates and times in this format. So in most cases, you should be safe just simply parsing by passing through an ISO 8601 date or daytime string. So now this is going to be a moment object for the 19th of May 2019 once again 
it's going to be displaying in my own time zone. So I can save this and refresh. We can see here, this two string is now going to give us Sunday, May 19. So pretty standard result um, in GMT plus 10. Of course, down here, we're getting the UTC version, which is of course 10 hours behind. So we get the 14th hour on the 18th of May. So once again, this is in local mode. So back inside here, you can pass in something like even the time part. So we can say here, for example, T23100.000, and this will give us um, obviously um, this same result, but with a time part. So now, if I was to save this and refresh, we get here, of course, the 23rd hour, 10 minutes past, still in my local time zone. And the same thing for, of course, the UTC or ISO string version down here. Of course, being ISO 8601, you can even give it the UTC offset. For example, if I was to say plus 0500, this means it is obviously five hours more than UTC or GMT. So obviously um, the actual date time being created is gonna take into consideration the five hour offset. So I can save this and refresh and now in my local time, remember, all of these are displaying in my local time. In my local time, we get here, of course, 4.10 a.m. And now it's May 20, so the offset has been applied. And of course, we get the UTC once again being adjusted uh, based on that UTC offset. So that is how you parse using an ISO 8601 string. Alrighty, cool. So the third way here is gonna be parsing using a format. So this right here is probably um, the most recommended way to parse using Moment.js and this one is gonna guarantee that you'll get accurate results each time. So for example, I can say here M is equal to Moment. I'm gonna pass in here a random date time string. We can say here 1206, 2019. This is formatted in Australian uh, format. So in Australia, we write the day and then the, um, the month. So maybe a 14 would be a better example. So the 14th of June, 2019 in Australian format at 4.50 p.m. So if we want moment to accurately pick up this day, then we can pass in here as a second argument. We're gonna pass in a format. So, what we can do is we can uh, reference the documentation. So, go to the documentation here, go down to the string plus format section, then scroll down here, we can see we get all of these input tokens. So, basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find, uh, you know, which one of these matches up with each part of your date time string, and then you're gonna give it the values right here. So, for example, we have here a two digit day. So back inside here, we can find the two digit day right here for day of the month. So we can pass here uh, DD and then forward slash to match that right there. We have here a two digit month. That's gonna be MM, then forward slash a four digit year. That's gonna be YYYY, then a space. Then we have here an hour. So back inside the documentation, we can scroll down to the time section. We can see an hour um, with a single digit is gonna be a lowercase h. So back inside here, we can say h, then colon, and then mm, that is for the, um, for the two digit minutes, and then capital A for the p.m. or a.m. So now we have successfully and very accurately uh, told moment what kind of format this is in, so then it can actually give you an accurate and well-formed date object. So now I can save this and refresh the browser inside here. We get now Friday, June 14, 2019 at 4.50 p.m. in my own local time zone. So it works really well. And of course, the UTC ISO string right there. So that is the second way and probably the best way um, to parse using a moment.js.
Um, the third way, sorry, um, the fourth way here is going to be parsing using uh, milliseconds since Epoch. So as we know, Epoch is, uh, I believe it is January 1st, um, 1970. So of course, if you're going to pass in um, milliseconds, you can just say moment and then pass in here um, your milliseconds. So for example, we can say 600,000 milliseconds is going to be 10 minutes. So we can say here, create using uh, milliseconds since epoch in brackets, uh, 1st Jan 1970. So I can save this and refresh. And we can see here, we get, of course, 10, 10 a.m. in my local time zone. And we get 10 minutes past January 1st, 1970 on the first hour. So we can see clearly now how this is going to give us the UTC uh, formatted date and of course it works just fine by passing in your milliseconds just like that. So what about what about seconds since epoch? Well it's very similar we can say create using seconds since epoch 1st Jan 1970. This one is going to be m is equal to moment.unix we can pass in here the second. So in this case, I believe this will be two hours. So um, the dot Unix method here is going to allow us to do this with seconds as opposed to this without the dot Unix method. So now I can save this and refresh. We get now two hours past the 1st of Jan 1970. And of course, once again, still in our own time zone. Alrighty, cool. So now we come to the part where we can actually make this UTC mode instead of local mode. Obviously everything up to this point it is outputting my GMT offset. In this case, in the editor, if I was to say m equals moment dot utc just like that, in this case it's going to create a moment object in utc mode. So now if I save this and refresh we can see here we get the exact same time for both of these outputs because the time zone right here or the GMT offset is zero. So now all of the displaying and all of the output is in UTC or GMT. So essentially um, you can use I believe all of these methods for parsing the same way you would in UTC. So for example, if I was to uh, simply pass in this right here into here, including the plus five hour offset, save this and refresh, and it's still gonna be displayed in GMT plus zero. Okay, so now essentially with this moment object, you can then use all of the moment features or at least most of the moment features from one of these parsed moment objects. And that is all for parsing. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you later.